Hey there everybody. In this video we are going to study rotational kinetic energy. Basically we want to be able to study the motion of something which is rotating in terms of energy. So real quick review. Remember that things moving in a line, just normal objects moving, have kinetic energy k equals one half mv squared. In order to keep that separate from things that are rotating we're going to specify that it has linear kinetic energy, or you might also hear the term translational kinetic energy. And so I'm going to call that K subscript to L now instead of just K. The reason for that, if something is rotating, that means it has rotational kinetic energy. So we need to be able to distinguish between the two. I'm going to say kinet or, um, rotational kinetic energy is K subscript R, K subscript ROT for rotation. And our kinetic energy rotational equation would simply be one half. Instead of mass, we would put moment of inertia, or I. And instead of velocity, we would put omega, or the angular velocity squared. Here's the cool thing about rotational kinetic energy is it's measured in the same unit as linear kinetic energy, which makes it really useful for comparing the two. Measured in joules. And just like always, work is needed to change the energy of something. So now we just have another form of energy that we need to be able to account for and describe. So let's suppose we have a simple example like a merry-go-round. And a merry-go-round is basically a cylinder, so its I would be 1 half mr squared. And let's suppose it's got a mass of 40 kilograms and a radius of 2 meters. question is how much work is needed to speed it up from an angular velocity of 10 radians per second to 30 radians per second. So we know work's being done in changing rotational kinetic energy here. And so I'm going to say that's equal to the final rotational kinetic energy minus the initial rotational kinetic energy. And I can find the initial rotational kinetic energy by doing 1 half I omega squared. Just got to find I first. And it's just plug and chug into the equation that's given to us. And so it would be like 80 kilogram times square meter. And so substituting into the rotational kinetic energy equation, that would give us something like 4,000. The unit would be kilogram meter squared per second squared, which is, don't forget, a joule. Do the same thing to find the final kinetic energy, only this time we would use an angular velocity of 30 radians per second. And that would give us something like 36,000 joules. And so the work done would just be the change in energy, so final value minus initial value, which would give us something like 32,000 joules. So it actually take quite a bit of work to speed the merry-go-round up by this much. But 30 radians per second is a pretty big velocity for a merry-go-round. So it makes sense we get a pretty big energy. Now the other situation we could see besides something just rotating is something that is rolling we say rolling, we're going to assume that the object doesn't slip. That's a much more complicated situation. So when an object is rolling on some surface, it's the only way to roll, um, static friction causes the point on the object, which is in contact with that surface, to remain at rest relative to the surface. That's what keeps the wheel, or whatever we're talking about, from slipping. So if we draw a simple picture, here's our rolling object, the point that's in contact with the surface doesn't move. It's held in place by static friction. Otherwise, the wheel would slip. Now, the center of mass, we're going to say, moves with some velocity v. So it's going forward at velocity v. In order for those two facts to be true, that means that the top of the object has to be moving forward with velocity 2v. Again, this is relative to the surface itself. So this is what it looks like from the standpoint of somebody who's like standing on the surface. If we do it from the standpoint of the center of the wheel, from that frame of reference, like where the center of the wheel would be at rest, then both the top and the bottom move at velocity v, just in opposite directions. The bottom part of the wheel will be, look like it's going backwards, top part of the wheel would look like it's going forward. And then from that frame of reference, the angular velocity omega will look like that. 
and we can actually relate the angular velocity to the velocity through the radius. So remember that angular velocity would be v over r. And so if we have the radius of the object, then we can relate its velocity, which would be v, that's the velocity of the center of mass, to the angular velocity through the radius. So I told you all of that basically to remind you of this little fact. And then backing up a little bit, the velocity of the object as a whole is equal to that velocity, which we can relate to the angular velocity with that. So that's kind of the important nitty-gritty fact that we need to know. On with the show. So what that means is that a rolling object has both linear and rotational kinetic energy. We have to be able to account for them both. So summarizing, center of mass moves with velocity v. So kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv squared. And it also rotates with some angular velocity omega. So k rotation will be 1 half i omega squared. And then again, omega equals the velocity over the radius. So let's look at a simple example. Suppose we have a hoop, and the moment of inertia of a hoop is mr squared. It's got a mass of 4 kilograms, and it rolls without slipping at 8 meters per second. We want to know how much energy does the hoop have. So, it's got two forms of energy, linear kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. The linear kinetic energy will be 1 half mv squared. The rotational kinetic energy will be 1 half i omega squared. And i is equal to mr squared. And omega is equal to v over r. Got to remember that fact. So omega squared would be v squared over r squared. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in this for i, we're going to substitute in that for omega. So that will look like this. Plug in mr squared for i, and then v squared over r squared for the um, angular velocity. So notice in all that that the r squareds cancel out, leaving me with something that looks like this. 1 half mv squared plus 1 half mv squared. And so half of something plus half of something equals a whole of something. Hopefully we can see that the energy didn't depend on the radius, just depended on the shape, like what fraction went in front of the mr squared, depending on the fact that it was a hoop and not something else like a disk. And so we can substitute into something like that. That's pretty straightforward. And we can get an answer of 256 joules. So if this was something that was not rotating, it was just moving forward, it would have half that amount of energy. So because it's moving forward and rotating, it's got both kinds of energy. It means it's got a lot more than just something moving forward. So again, notice that the radius canceled out. The only thing that determined how much energy this thing had was the fact that it was in the shape of a hoop. Let's look at another example. This is going to be kind of an old example. Um, suppose we have a block on a ramp, so 0.8 meter tall ramp. We want to know how fast it's going when it reaches the bottom. So this is something we've been doing for a while. block at the top of the ramp would start with potential energy. And then a block at the bottom of the ramp would have kinetic energy. Energy would be conserved. So we'd say the potential energy we started with equals the kinetic energy we end with. And set mgh equal to 1 half mv squared. Cancel out the m's. And we would get an expression like that. And substituting in, and in this situation that would give us a velocity like 4 meters per second. Something we've been doing for a while now. Here's the new part. What if instead of a block we had a marble? So a marble is a sphere, meaning its moment of inertia is 2 fifths mr squared. It would still start out with potential energy. When we got to the bottom, it would be moving forward having linear kinetic energy, and it would also be rotating. Marble would be spinning, it would be rolling, and so it would also have rotational kinetic energy. And so we could start out by writing something like the potential energy at the top equals the kinetic energy at the bottom, but we would have to include both kinds of kinetic energy. We'd say UG equals K linear plus K rotational. 
And so MGH would still be the potential energy. 1 half mv squared would still be the linear kinetic energy. And then 1 half i omega squared would be the rotational energy. We're going to play the same game. We're going to plug in the expression for i. This time it's 2 fifths mr squared. And then plug in v squared over r squared for omega squared. And again, the m's would all cancel out. There's an m in every term. And then over that far right term, the r's would cancel out, leaving us with something like this. So 1 half times 2 fifths would be 1 fifth, and then b squared. So notice, it looks the same as the previous example. The only difference is, instead of this being 1 half, like it was before, now it's 1 fifth. That's the only thing that's going to change as we change our shape. So getting a common denominator, I would do tenths, that's what I would do. Adding them together, you would get that to be equal to 7 tenths v squared. So if gh equals 7 tenths v squared, 10 over 7 gh would equal v squared, take the square root of both sides, now we got something for the velocity. Notice it looks a lot like this over here. The only difference is the 2 is now a 10 over 7. It's a little bit less than 2. It's not going to be going as fast because some of the energy is going to make it roll. So putting in some numbers, and then pulling the crank on the calculator machine would give you something like 3.4 meters per second. So again, notice that that's smaller than the energy of the block going down the same ramp. It's not that it started with less energy or that it lost energy. It's just that the rolling marble has to split the energy between linear kinetic and rotational kinetic energy. So it takes energy to make the marble roll rather than just slide. If it slid down, like if the ramp was frictionless and it slid without rolling, then it would have a velocity of 4 meters per second. Because marbles tend to roll down ramps, it's more like 3.4 meters per second. Okay, so some quick reminders. Uh, remember that rotating objects have rotational kinetic energy. It's the whole I equals one half I omega squared. Remember that rolling objects have both linear and rotational kinetic energy. And then if you can remember that V is equal to omega over R, that'll make your problem solving life much, much easier. That's the end of this physics video. Until next time, ta-ta.